we're talking one hospital here in Manhattan where many of the people on this panel have said, notwithstanding what is a true need for health care in this community, there are other hospitals with lots of other beds who can accommodate the people who need to go in beds. The issue has to be, given the re financial economic realities of not just this city, but this country, what can you do to keep as much money as you had in this community for health care services? Thomas, I may. Just because this is a very real, that we're getting, I mean, this is, this is it in a way, all right? So we need to keep what we have now so we have something to build on, right? But, so, you know, I, you know, I'm putting all energy into keeping urgent care. We're trying to draw down heal grants to keep urgent care, right? And primary care and specialties, behavioral, geriatric, HIV. Okay, okay. But, so, we got to keep and build on that, but you make it sound, I mean, I, we're fighters here, right? We're, I mean, so, but you're making it sound like it's almost not even worth putting our energy into it. Come on. So what do we, we got to, we, we need to build up, how do we keep what we have and build on it? I'm not I saying it's not, it's, it's not, you have to use those energies. I, 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 I just, I, I just think that you have to use the energies knowing what, what you're facing. All right, That's so, but just Lorraine, knowing just, what you're facing. Let me just, say, so, so, okay, so, uh, you know, this, uh, there's someone out here who, for whatever reason, you know, the people from West Side Neighborhood Association and my staff, they thought this is very compelling. I just need to say what it is, because this is it. I am a 71-year-old woman with cardiac risk factors. I'm getting ready to sell my home of 40 years, which means she bought her co-op cheap, right? She was rent stabilized, so she bought it cheap, and she's gonna cash out, because if she has a heart, if I have a heart attack, she says, I'll die. Why would a community health center, an FQHC, or not, why, why, is, that, why is that a useful alternative to this woman? We wanna keep her. What is she going to do if she has a heart attack? What are we going to do now so we can build on it to get the future? We need to know, because I want, I, want, I want my nurses back. I, I, want my, I want my healthcare workers back, because they were making a good living, and we like them. And I want to keep this woman here, who, who might have a heart attack, and which, and my face is getting red, right? So how is an urgent care center going? Why should, you know, what, come on, anybody. The idea of primary care is to prevent people having the condition that leads to a heart attack. Uh, 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 wait, 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 now. Uh, uh. She already had, too late. It's already bad, okay? Because so, you have one heart attack doesn't mean you're going to have another one. So, all right. Come on. She's, she, Tom. she's on our side. No, she's not. Tom. Yes, she is. Okay. Okay, Tom. Go ahead, and then I lead, okay? Um, let's take 300 patients who were in St. Vincent's as you closed, okay? Um, there were probably, at any given time, a handful of people who were experiencing life-threatening emergencies who were being treated and who, who hmm? Two hands. Two hands. Well, let me take it on 24 hours. And of the 300 people who were there, and then obviously there's hundreds of other people coming in and getting ambulatory services and things like that. And, you know, we do have this feeling about emergencies, and we're really talking heart attacks, uh, strokes, traffic accidents, and uh, some kind of violence. I mean, that's the, that's the issue that's there. As I said, I live on 15th Street. 
for 12 hours of the day, I'm actually in my office in Midtown. Uh, and if I had that heart attack, I wouldn't go to St. Vincent's. I'm, I'm going to go to physically wherever I am. And so the dilemma here, and you know, it's really, it's the choice. I'll, and I'm going to come down to the end of what I think the choice is. We feel this issue, the, the personal threat that we have about ourselves, about our loved ones, about the life-threatening circumstance. I think everybody buys the argument that the freestanding emergency room just probably does, doesn't work. Uh, you don't have the intensive care unit, you don't have the surgical backup, you don't have all the things that actually could save somebody's life in that circumstance. So the, the emergency patient, which is the most critical situation, but it's the smallest number of patients. The question is, can we build the argument for a full service hospital around that extreme situation? And, well, may, look, maybe you can. But I guess what I'm saying is that when you come down to looking at what else it takes, the doctors, the physical investment, the nurses, every other kind of thing, most of them are not dealing with an emergency. I mean, the vast number are not dealing with an emergency at any given time. So let me, I'll do it, I'll finish it. So if, we're, if we build the solution around the emergency, then that's going to take us in one direction in an argument, and there's just a whole lot of other evidence that's simply saying, uh, you know, get me an express lane across 14th Street. Get me an express lane across 23rd Street. Uh, I mean, it, it's really... Or uptown. Get me... Get, in an emergency, remember, time is the key question. Don't take me to limit. And so I've got to solve the time question. How do I get to a, to a place that can give me the real service? in the fastest time that gives me the chance at the life-threatening, uh, dealing with the life-threatening circumstance. But I want to go back, I mean, you can build the argument around the emergency if you want to. I think everybody understands it is the most critical personal situation we can talk about. It's the smallest fraction of the total operation of what we have to do to make this thing work, okay? So let me just, let me just finish the comment and, and Tom, come back to you. The, you asked for where the advice is here. You have an incredible amount of leverage at this point. Clearly, you need a you need a partnership to go make this go forward. You, you have to work with somebody else to make this go. You have an incredible amount of leverage at this point around the enhanced urgent care service. That's not a primary care service. That like, clearly is not a primary care service. Or you can make, you can continue in the sense that we're going to move to say the hospital is the only way to do this. But you have an enormous amount of leverage at this point to enhance the urgent care services and to add in all the other components of service. And you make the discussion at this point that, that, you, uh, that you choose to. All right, so, ex I'm sorry, you know, you know, okay. 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 They are not in charge of getting us the hospital. That's me and Dick and Chris and Jerry yeah. and the governor and us. But I asked them to come here to tell us the real world, right? Because otherwise we can yell and scream and be angry all we want. But we want to know how we get a new hospital and we have to know what we're up against. And no one, can stop. And no one is more angry than Eileen, except for maybe me okay. and Eileen. We are hearing the truth as these folks know it, right? And we need to know it to get what we want. Am I right about that? Yes. Okay. So if Eileen says it's true, so listen to what they said, because we need to know, because that's what we're up against. And we're going to win, but we need to know what we're up against. Okay. Okay.